today, it's going to be hot. So, got my jugs. <laughs> but what I do with these jugs is my choice, my option. You know, I could pour them on my head when it gets hotter, you know, and try to cool off that way. Or I could drink them, you know, I mean, because it is, you know, it's good water. But the reason why I got these two jugs of water was to give my plants a good soaking. You see, because it's hotter, I figured, well, the plants are going to absorb more water and there's going to be more dehydration and they're going to need more water so that way they can you know, continue to build and, and bear the fruit that I can see from here. You know, my tomatoes are growing and they're getting bigger. It's kind of like what happens in life, you know, is that there are things that always compare to and relate to that which was in creation from the beginning of the world that God created, you know, the world and the plants therein and the animals. We can learn a lot from them. You know, one of the things that you can't change in life is getting old. I mean, you can try. You can make your appearance look different. You can try to color your hair and, you know, pull your skin tighter, you know, and make your skin fatter or, you know, more collagen or this, that, and the other thing, you know, and make yourself look like you're not older, but bluntly, you're going to get older. One of the things you can't avoid also is that as a Christian, you will sin. That's a foregone conclusion. You are a corrupted being. And because you're corrupted and you don't have incorruption, that corruption is going to influence you till the day you die. When you die, then this corruption that we live in, this body of flesh that has all these problems with it, will put on incorruption. And then we won't have the issue with sin anymore. Sin will be gone permanently. And I like that. Until that day, we still deal with sin. Now, you could deal with sin in a variety of ways. You know, you could try to cover it and pour some water on your head, you know, or you could maybe, you know, like kind of, I don't know, you know, kind of splash the water on yourself and try to wash it off. But no matter what you do with the water, you're still going to wind up being in sin in some way. You're going to sin. So, you know, you ask forgiveness and you do those things that you normally do. But you know something I found more effective than, you know, just asking forgiveness or mercy from God or whatever is grace. You know, God gives us grace. Grace is an interesting thing. I compare grace to like my, my little things of water. Because in what I'm learning today, you know, and what I'm applying today in this simile or metaphor or this, you know, way of looking at grace is that when I see the world around me getting worse, I give it more water because it needs to grow. And, you know, the weed's going to grow with the tares. There's no doubt about that. You can't change that fact. If you go out and water the soil, no matter where you are, you could be a farmer, and if you go out and plant wheat, there's going to be tares. The tares are going to grow. Somewhere, some point in your field of harvest, you're going to see some tares. You're going to see some weeds growing. It just goes with the wind. It comes with the, the sunshine. It's kind of in the soil. You know, it's part of that corruption thing. You're going you're gonna to reap, you know, kind of like a, a lot of wheat. Don't get me wrong. The majority of what you plant, you know, you'll sow, or what you sowed, you'll plant and harvest and reap, which will be wheat if it's a wheat field. If it's not, it'll be a fruit tree or whatever. But at the same time, whether you know it or not, some bird may fly by and take a poop. And you know what happens when a bird poops? He's got seeds. <laughs> and those seeds bring weeds. <laughs> and unfortunately, sometimes the earth itself, you know, has been corrupted. So it too, because it's under a curse, will produce weeds. So you kind of have a foregone conclusion, just like getting older that whatever field you're planting is going to grow some weeds. Some point in time it's going to grow some weeds if you water it. So what I look at is it's like life, you know, I see people that, you know, I know the end of the world is coming and I know that the things are getting worse 
that the world is getting worse that people are getting worse you know that i could let those things influence me you know and make me bitter make me kind of like mean spirited make me grumpy and frumpy make me you know stumpy or make me stupid you know but i choose not to do that you see i kind of know ahead of time that it's going to get worse i prepared myself for the time that it will get worse and in so doing i know that i'll be challenged with greater issues in my life that maybe at some point in time i might think i got worse because from my point of view i might think i'm worse but from god's point of view i'm closer to that desired result he wants for me which is a life without sin a life that's committed to him a life that's confident in the faith and the relationship that he started and that he's going to continue in me until the day of salvation when he shall save me even from myself and so i look around and i see a lot of christians getting worse in their faith than better you know they start picking on each other they start picking apart somebody else picking apart that ministry picking apart you know different things you know kind of like when they should be going out and taking care of the wheat you know in the fields or harvesting it they're busy doing something else pulling weeds you know they're they're out weed pulling you know and if my my field was full of weeds i guess i'd do that too because i don't want to start a fire once it dries out but you see i got a different kind of field i have some tomato plants over here and they're bearing fruit and because they're bearing fruit you know i'm not so concerned about the weeds as i am about them continuing to bear fruit and so what i do is i give them a big jug of water and today i've done that every one of my little tomato plants over here well they're not little they're now about five feet six feet tall <laughs> but well five feet tall and some of them have you know cherry tomatoes some of them have other tomatoes and got to give them lots of water when it's hot but having said that i figure where sin abounds the scripture says grace much more abounds we ought to give more grace when we see more sin abound when we see others that are failing in some way then we ought to increase our measure of grace that we give to each other we ought to you know not be stingy with the water in other words we ought to share it more you know and pour it where it needs to be and increase it because there's coming a time and this might be the time that we're in where Jesus said something interesting about he who has would be given what little a man has would be taken away but he who has he will be given more and it's like there's a certain amount of truth about you, you know if you don't use what you got you're not going to get any more than you had and that little bit that you had is going to be taken away you got to produce you got to do something you have to be used as it were by god you have to kind of like go beyond just simply getting your salvation and then thinking you're fine and dandy without ever once talking to God about it. And that's kind of our relationship that we have to develop and mature in. We have to recognize the times are getting worse. We have to acknowledge the seasons are evil. The day is evil thereof and that we live in a perverse and wicked generation no matter what generation you grew up in it's perverse and wicked but ours is getting really bad because yeah the end of the world's coming but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy life it doesn't mean you can't employ the gifts of the holy spirit in your life it just means that where you may be struggling then apply grace much more so let god work in that part of your life even to greater degree than you have before because it's going to get worse don't get me wrong it's going to get challenging before even what we call the rapture happens it's not even there yet although there are a lot of people that have already kind of stepped away and stepped aside and gone different directions you know like they're arming themselves and getting guns and weapons and you know self defense mechanisms you know to protect themselves as though they're going to be around long enough to use them but they're doing that you know for their own conscience sake you know they need to do that i guess but we who know the lord ought to employ the lord to do more on our behalf than ever before we ought to ask him to be more of our lord than ever before we ought to recognize he wants to be more obvious in our life than ever before 
Because as the days of old and they were before, God moved in mighty ways. And it was obvious that he was going to do so again in our generation because we are in the last days. So you may want to consider well what you're doing with water, the water of the word, so to speak, and what you're doing with grace. Because you may have taken grace for yourself and applied it easily, forgiving yourself for some sin you committed and you got saved. But if you haven't taken that grace and extended it to others, I don't know about you, but there's kind of a warning there about, you know, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And you, you got to be careful there. You know, you don't want to jeopardize what little faith you had to find out you don't have any faith at all. Because it's real easy to follow Jesus if you just let him lead and you get out of the way. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you shall make me know and be known of wisdom, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Not as though I had already attained or either were already perfected, but every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is of God, and is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, the beginnings of the movings of God moving in our life by endowing us and empowering us with his spirit for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's what the gifts of the spirit are for. For the perfecting of the saints. Not to criticize them or to beat them down. And not for the work of the ministry to you know, think that you're calling people out in sin. That's not your job. But it's for the edification of the body of Christ to minister to and to administer the grace you've been given. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Until we become a perfect man. And you know, I like that. It's not about, in men's ministry, about me being a man of God. It's not about me being a man with God. It's not me being about a man about God. Really, it's about all men coming up into the stature of a man of God, Jesus. It's always been about being like and looking to our example, as well as he was looking to his father as an example of what he should do. And that's what our goal is, is really to be like Jesus. I mean, isn't he your example of a hero? Or are you caught up in the world and you kind of got distracted by the attraction of a Tebow? or a leader, or a political person, or a sports star, somehow, you know, lowered your standards from perfection to imperfection. And the other thing I can tell you is that if you do that, you know, if you lower your standards of what your heroes are, you know, and choose someone else other than Jesus, hey, once you start lowering your standards, you're going to keep lowering that criteria until you make yourself look righteous and then you'll start calling everyone else unholy and you'll think you are when you're not. We are to purify ourselves, not to purify others. We are to change ourselves, but not to change others. We are to commit ourselves unto God, but not commit others. We are to pray for others and the edification of the body of Christ means to build them up, to water them with the water of the Word. If I could give you a word today to really give an example, it's like, hey, splish, splash, take a bath. I mean, come on, you know, clean up, but then also build up. Because once you're cleaned up, you know, of your own little personal time that you need to spend with God. You know, we used to say pray, prayed up, fed up, filled up, you know, moved up, and then do up. You know, but once you've got God in your life and you're getting ready to, you know, kind of like get more than what your selfishness needs for the day, then start thinking about others and what you can do for their way that they're going. Because for my plants, if I don't water them, 
they won't grow. That's just the way it is. They will perish because they are dependent upon me right now for their sustenance. And that's what you have to be with the Lord your God. Dependent upon Him for your sustenance or, quite frankly, spiritually, you're dying. And maybe you're already dead. Be careful. You may not realize how real some of these things around us in life are. Your house plants giving you an example of how to care for plants and how to care for your soul. The plants in your garden, how to grow up other believers in faith and in grace and mercy. Using even the very analogy of the water of the word, you know, to the very inclusion of what we should be doing when God wants to make the occlusion of the world our perspective to see him in everything that we're doing and everything that we're saying and everything that we're being. I mean, if you're a you know techie, you could probably invent some, you know, way of ministering through the techie kind of, you know, I pad it, you know, so it's a, I got it, you know, well anyways, maybe. But in creation is more of an obvious connection and you can make that obvious distinction through the word of God because that's what Jesus used. And so learn more about what God is about and you'll find out that's what we should be more about and less about the world.